All right, great to be with you today. We're in Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11. We're going to spend a couple of days talking about prayer and, um, you know, short little pieces on prayer. I would encourage you, though, that uh, as we have the opportunity to see what the scripture says about prayer, um, I would encourage you after these devotions just to spend some time praying. I mean, imagine that, right? Just spend some time really seeking the face of God and then applying what uh, you learn here over the next two days. So, So Luke chapter 11, we're going to start in verse 2. And the disciples have come to Jesus and uh, they have seen how John instructed his disciples on how to pray. And so they have the same request to the Lord. They say, hey, you know, John taught his disciples to pray. Would you teach us how to pray as well? And so Jesus says this, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us or who has sinned against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Look, I just really quickly would like to encourage you to use this as a model for your prayer life or use this as a, as, as a pattern. You know, I, I think sometimes you can, this is just natural, right? You sit down and you're, you want to pray and sometimes you don't know where to start. Um, sometimes you find yourself just, just kind of rambling. Uh, it's not focused, it's not directed. Uh, sometimes you can get to the end of your time of prayer with the Lord and, and um, you, you don't even really remember what it was that you prayed um, and you're not left with any expectation of prayers that you're hoping that God would answer. And I think sometimes that's just natural. You know, you start and uh, you pray for 30 seconds and you're just like, hey, you just, you, you got, you've prayed everything that you can think of praying. This is a great model just to kind of organize your prayers and make sure that you're hitting key things that are important. Um, And I think that if you practice this, you know, if you follow this model, because you know Jesus did not expect you just to take this and pray these words heartlessly or like just, you know, um, in a repetitious manner. Um, If you do take this as a model, what you're going to discover is that your prayer life is going to be really robust and you, you're going to find yourself in a place where you don't have enough time to pray all the things that God is placing on your heart. So seven things here just to help guide you in your time of prayer. Number one is this, our Father in heaven. So remember, prayer is to the Father. Prayer is to the Father. You know, um, when we pray, we're acknowledging the Trinity because prayer is to the Father. It's through the Son and it's by the Spirit. Prayer is to the Father. So I'm directing my prayers to God the Father. Um, I'm not saying that it's wrong to to pray to Jesus or to acknowledge the Spirit, but Jesus did direct his disciples to be directing their prayers uh, to the Father. We come to the Father through the Son. So it's because of the sacrifice of the Son that we're able to even lift up requests to the Lord. And then, of course, it's the Spirit that's interceding on our behalf. So, number one is to the Father. Number two, it's in reverence. Holy or hallowed is your name. When you come to Him, He is your Heavenly Father, but He is also holy. He is unlike any other. Um, The third thing that we recognize here, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, when we pray, we're praying according to His will. How do you know the will of God? Well, that's why it's important to be in the Scriptures. God discloses to you what his purposes are, how he does things and why he does things and what he wants to do through his word. So when we pray, we're not praying for our will to be done. We're praying for his will to be done. Give us day by day our daily bread. So we're trusting him. We're giving specific petitions, things that we we need, the basics of life. We ought to be coming to God with the basics of life and trusting him to meet those very basic needs that we have. But we do that in prayer, right? We're relying on the Lord because the truth is you can't rely on the government. You can't rely on the system of the world. You know, it can be something as, 
you know, um, unexpected as a pandemic that throws everything into a state of chaos. No, ultimately what we do is we give our needs to God. We're praying for him to meet our needs, the needs of our family, um, our kids, our, 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 the, the families of our kids. So we give him our petitions, um, not only just for our needs, but also forgive us of our sins. So, so there's a heart of repentance. There's a, a need that we have to be forgiven by God. And we're, we're always reflecting, self-reflecting, and asking the Spirit of God to show us areas where there are sins that we might be engaged in. And we bring those in confession. We bring those uh, with a desire to forsake them. And then we ask God to forgive us for them, that He would not hold our sin against us. Uh, and then, you know, there's a desire to be Christ-like, number six lead us not into temptation. So we want to be living our lives in a way um, that is Christ-like. We're following the example of Jesus. To do that, of course, you know, uh, we have to be empowered by the Spirit of God, but there should be uh, areas in our lives where we're asking God to grow us, to mature us spiritually, areas where we want to grow um, spiritually. So I'm saying, you know, sometimes there are areas where we're walking in the flesh or we're not thinking in a biblical way. We might be thinking in a worldly way. We're asking God to help us change the way we think and change the way that we live. And then finally, he says, but deliver us from the evil one. So we know that there's a, a spiritual battle every day that's being waged against us. We acknowledge that. We acknowledge that we can't stand against the adversary on our own, but we need the help and the strength of God. So seven, you know, simple points, you know, that I think are helpful in your time of prayer just to go through methodically. And then, you know, as you, as you do kind of focus on these seven things, God will begin to stir your heart with very specific things that you need to pray for. I want to encourage you right now just to uh, spend some time in prayer and uh, use the, this prayer as a model and uh, expect God to really grow your prayer life as you follow the example of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would grow our prayer life and that we would take the time, God, we'd be intentional uh, and take the time to really invest in praying and seeking your face in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great day.